Welcome to today's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. Today we will be on 2 Samuel chapter 7, beginning in verse 1. We'd like to remind you that you can send in your gift or offering for New Macedonia Baptist Church to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. And as always, uh, may God richly bless you for what you've given and for what you will give. We'd like to ask that you would pray for some people, uh, Robin Smith, C.A. Griffith, Mitchell Mays and his wife Amanda, Pam Baker and her mother Millie Little, uh, Joy Griffith, and uh, Tiffany Griffith, uh, the whole Wilson family, a lot of them have some issues going on, all those that are sick and in need and whatever their sickness might be, whatever their need may be, God does know and God can help with all things, nothing's too big or too small for him. I would ask that you would pray for all those that have lost loved ones. Pray for the elderly, the widows, the widowers, the orphans. Uh, pray for our church, the missionaries, our congregation, the evangelists, and of course, above all, pray for the lost, because they are the most in need of any. Let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the good, great, perfect, wonderful gifts you've given us, the many, many blessings. Lord, you bestow upon us. Just remove anything from us that would hinder our prayers, Lord, and bless us. Bless us as we read this uh, word today, Lord, and uh, in uh, 2 Samuel, Lord. Bless our reading of it. Bless our understanding of it. Bless our expounding of it, if it be your will, Lord. We'll thank you for it. Bless those prayer requests that were made according to your perfect will, Lord. We want all all things done according to your will. And we would ask, Heavenly Father, that your name would be glorified above all others, Lord, and held and honorable, Lord, and respectful. We ask, oh Lord, that you would continue to be with our church. Lord, let it grow, not for our sakes, but for your sake, Lord, that, that souls might be added to your kingdom. We'll thank you for that, Lord. We'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and amen. As I said, we are on 2 Samuel chapter 7. We'll begin in verse 1. We'll read the first three verses. And it came to pass when the king sat at his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about him from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Well, now, as we read in the last uh, verse or two there, David's now the king over all of uh, the Hebrews, all of the Jews. He's the king over the northern kingdom, which was called Israel, and then he was king, king over the southern kingdom, which is called Judah. So he has been given rest, as we were told here in the first verse, from his enemies. And he's just sitting there, and he's thinking about, probably thinking about all the great things, reflecting on all the wonderful things that God has done for him, how God has given him rest from his enemies, how he's put him where he is now. And it occurs to him that, uh, that he has a house of cedar. And, and you can read this here in uh, 2 Samuel 5, 11 sometime if you want to. I'll just tell you what it says. It says, And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons, and they built David in house. So now David's in this house. He's comfortable. He don't have enemies uh, fighting, and, and he's thinking about, you know, what, what, you know, what God? Uh, where is God? Where has the ark been? So David, now he knew. He looked, you know, as he looked around, and then as he as he remembered, and he and he's been through all these different countries and different places, different nations. He remembers that, that all these heathen nations. They have all these great temples built, all these wonderful things built out of granite and, and ivory and all these kind of wonderful stones and everything. And they have these wonderful statues and, and stone works and they've got cedar works and all these great things going on. And, and he realizes that the, the God that, that who is worshipped uh, by the Israelites, they have to go and serve him in a tent in a tabernacle in the desert or, or in the wilderness. And he called he called for Nathan the prophet, and he told Nathan, he said, For I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. So he's feeling kind of guilty about that. And Nathan was a, was, a, was a good prophet. He was definitely a good man of God. He was used mightily of God, but he, he makes a little mistake here, a little problem here. He assumes that because David has... has been blessed by God all this time, and God's been with him all these all these years, and blessed him in everything he did. That David, uh, David, it's it just been 
so pleased uh, uh, God and everything that he's done that David would be going to go build that temple if he wanted to for the ark of God that God wouldn't have a problem with that so he told David without consulting God he said go do all that is in thine heart for the Lord is with thee but now we'll see that God had other plans though Verses 4 through 7 says, uh, And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, and even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. And in all the places wherein I have walked, with all the children of Israel spake a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, uh, Why would you not build me a house of cedar? So that night God comes to uh, Nathan, maybe in a dream, maybe maybe Nathan was wide awake, whatever, but he, gave, he comes to him and he, and he gave him a message to give to David. He says, Shout thou. It's a question, Shout thou build me a house for me to dwell in? So, in other words, he is saying, can you be the one to build the house, or, or, uh, or uh, uh, that, should you build a house for me? So he goes on to tell David that he had not had a house all this time, uh, or a temple, or a building of anything, since, uh, 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 since they had even since he had gone and he had freed them and led them out of uh, all the Israelites out of Egypt. And it's interesting that God says there a couple of times that he had walked in a tent in a tabernacle, and he also walked with the children of Israel when he's talking about bringing them out of the wilderness. And God walked with them, he said. But he, he said he never told the leaders, he never told the people before, never told Moses, never told uh, Joshua or any of the judges, or, or uh, certainly not Saul, he, to, he not told any of them guys uh, to go and build him a house, those people that he had chosen to take care of the Israelites. He told, never told any of them to go build him a house of cedar, never had told them that. Now, I mentioned cedar trees there for a reason, because cedar was used, uh, and that was used for the important buildings. It was, it was probably, you know, richer things, uh, harder to get a hold of, cost more money, and, and because they used it because it had a nice fragrance. We know cedar smells good. It was resistant to insects and, and even somebody said even snakes. And it didn't decay or rot away as quickly or easy as other, other wood and other timber would. Also, cedar is a beautiful wood. It's beautiful. It's got that red and white patterns with red and white stripes on it. And as we know, people still use cedar in closets uh, to, to keep moths from eating their clothes. I do want to. I do want to go here to. Uh, if you want to go, go with me. Go over there to First uh, Corinthians chapter twenty-two, verse six through eight, and I, I want to just tell you about something and read something in here for you because those verses we read in Second uh, Samuel seven, uh, four through seven, doesn't tell us why God uh, rejected David to build that house uh, or that temple for him. But First uh, Chronicles twenty-two six through eight, through eight tells us this, and it says. Then he called for Solomon, his son, and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And that's David talking. He said, And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and thou hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. So there we're told why David was not allowed to, to uh, build that because he was a, was a man of war. He was a great man of war. He did great things and he fought for God, but still he, he shed a lot of blood. And Solomon, as we know, had not. Verses 8 through 11 uh, says, uh, Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thou thus was the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat. Thus saith, let me start again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, 
I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wicked, wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused them to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee and house. So he kind of said, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll decide who's going to make the house and where they're going to do it and what's going to happen with it. So God gave a, a brief history there of David and a little bit of Israel either. And he talked about a promise and a blessing for David's lineage. And he tells David that he took him from the sheep goat. Now the sheep goat is a place like a den or something, maybe a cave or something where the sheep are kept. And he brought him, he said, telling him from being a lowly shepherd, from leading the sheep around to leading uh, the people to being the shepherd or the ruler or the king or the captain over the people chosen by God to be his people, to be God's people. So he set David up to be king over his chosen people. And he tells David uh, that he was with him and he fought for him, that he defeated his enemies for him, and that he made a great name for him of the people on the earth. Everybody had heard of David. And, and Dave, uh, God goes on to tell David that he will bless Israel, he will bless him with this land uh, so that they can have a nation where they can not have to move around, but they can be a nation that they can, uh, they can build up and they can def defend themselves against enemies or anybody that would try to harm or destroy them. And you know, of course, we know just from what's in the news nowadays that there are still those that want to destroy and wipe uh, Zebra off the net, net map. Though rather. So God told David that long ago he had said that he would make David a house. Now earlier in this chapter we read about a cedar house that was made for David. And that's not the house he's talking about now. This is what he's talking about, uh, not that house that King Hiram, uh, Hiram of Tyre had built for him. But God's talking about establishing David's seed as a dynasty. Dynasty. He said that his seed would rule over Israel forever. And though David, though David may not have realized it or known it, it was the prophecy of the Messiah, of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that was going to be coming through David's lineage. Okay, verses 12 through 17 says, And when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy, but my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. So we see that God gave uh, Nathan a vision there to, uh, to tell David the stuff. stuff. So David is, uh, God is telling David that he's going to do something far better than just letting him build a, a permanent temple. But he says that after David is dead and long gone, that his seed will continue to continue to rule over uh, Israel. And he's talking about beginning with Solomon here. And he said that David's son Solomon shall build an home for God's name. So, so God reiterates that he will establish his seed forever. He says that several times in these verses. And we sometimes wonder this. When we read about Solomon, we read about the things that he did, how the boredom he got in sucked into and how all the strange wives he got that turned his heart away from God. We wonder, well, did, did God then reject him? Did God give up to all him? And, and did, he, did he go to hell? We kind of wonder, I guess, or I do. But I think in these verses 14 and 15, it tells us that God did not reject him. God says that he will be his father and Solomon will be his son. If he committed iniquity, and we know that Solomon did, that God would chasten him, he would punish him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men, which says to me uh, that he will give him physical punishments while he is all here on this earth. But he also says this, my mercy shall not depart away from him. Uh, so, so, and God tells him 
And God took his mercy, as he took his mercy rather from Saul. And he tells, uh, he tells David that his house, which is David's seed or David's lineage, will be established forever. Which, uh, which we understand to be speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, of course. Nathan then tells David all that God told him to relate to David. So he told him everything. David, uh, Nathan didn't leave anything out. He told him everything. 18 through 21 says, Then went King David in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God, but thou hast spoken also to thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, O Lord God, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake, and according to thine own heart, thou hast done all these great things to make thy servant know thee. So David went in. He went in before God, and I'm sure that means that he went into the tabernacle. He went in to speak to God and to humble himself before him. And he's saying that he, he wasn't worthy. He wasn't worthy. What am I, he says. Uh, he wasn't really to, uh, 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 worthy to receive this and for his seed to have, his seed to be such an honor bestowed on them. He says, for God, it was easy. It's a light thing for you, but to David, it's a great thing. I mean, it's a great thing to have his seed on the throne forever. And David says that God knows what's in his heart. God knows what's in man's heart. He always does. And David understood that. He knew it. And he, and he, he probably said, you know that I'm not always good. You know that I have bad thoughts. You know that I do bad th things and say bad things sometimes. And he says that for the word, word's sake, for thy word's sake, for God's word's sake, the truth of God's word, uh, as, as it is infallible, we know that it's, that is pure truth. Without it, there's no lie in it. God is truth. And he doesn't lie, and God does uh, what he wants, and he's always right about what he does. And, he, and he's just letting David know what he is going to do. He's just telling him, he's just going to let him, he said, you're letting your servant know. That's all you're doing. All the things God has done for David makes David know that God is true, that God is faithful, that God is perfect, and that God is uh, the king and master of all things. Uh, the last verses here says, uh, Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself and to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible. For thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations, and from their gods. And thou hast confirmed thyself, thy people Israel, to be a people unto thee forever. And thou, Lord, art become their God. And now, O Lord, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning this house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. And let my, thy name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hath revealed to thy servants, saying, I will build thee in house. Therefore have thy, thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord God, thou art that God. In thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore, now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee, O for before thee, for thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. So can, David continues his prayer to God here, and, and he praises God. There's a lot of praises in there. He praises God for his greatness, he, and he acknowledges that God is the only true God. He's the only one that's true God. He's the only good and great, perfect God, and they have seen, and they have seen. He's seen, and he heard, has heard what God can do. And again, he praises God for choosing Israel and taking them from bondage and making those slaves into to the free people, into his chosen people, uh, by defeating the heathen nations, by defeating uh, their false gods. Now David accepts that, that commission for himself that God has offered to him and given to him for them and, uh, and, and to establish their, uh, his throne forever. 
and uh, he thanks him for what he has done and what he will do for him and his family forever and he says he believes that God will do what he has promised and he, uh, he ends his prayer by asking God to bless him and his future seed to stay true servants to God and he knows that if God blesses them they will be blessed for e forever God blesses you you're blessed. That's a great. That's a great lesson that David is teaching us here. If God blesses you, you're blessed forever. If God's for you, who can be against you? Of course, we know that answer is no one. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Then, Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this chapter seven powerful, powerful uh, prayer that David made to you, Heavenly Father. Just this. Bless us, Lord, to be able to pray as David did, Lord, and, and, to, and to look at you the way David looked at you, Lord, as if there's none other. There's no one as great as you. There's no one as wonderful as you. There's no one as powerful as all-knowing or all-seeing as you are, Lord. We thank you. We ask you to continue, continue to be with us and bless us. Lord, bless Israel as you said you would. Keep them safe as you said you would. And we'll thank you for that, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you continue to give us that desire to read your word, to study your word, and especially to want to please you, Lord, and do anything and say anything that would be good in your sight, Lord, and in your eyes. We thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for all you will do for us. And we ask you to continue to bless us, Lord, and bless your holy name if it be your will. We'll thank you for it. And we'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and amen.